Hello and welcome to another episode of The Social Connection. It's your program about social media, the trends you talked about, the videos you shared and what new changes social media companies offered its users. I'm Preeti Tiwari and with me is Arun Nayal. Thank you Preeti. Welcome everyone. In the next half an hour, we'll take you through the top trends, latest news and everything that kept social media space busy. But first up, let's take a look at what we have in store for you in this edition. Telecom Regulatory Authority of India received over million of emails in support of net neutrality. YouTube's first ever video turned 10 years old on 23rd April. Google unveils its wireless service project 5. Customers will only pay for the data they use. Telecom Regulatory Authority of India has received over millions of emails in support of net neutrality from countries' netizens. This is the biggest ever response the country has ever seen for such a social campaign. Try on 27th March put up a consultation paper on its website asking users to give their views on net neutrality in India. Here's more in this report. Flooding the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India with their petitions, proponents of net neutrality have submitted more than 1 million petitions to keep the internet free. The try sought public comments till 24th April before making its recommendations on net neutrality and internet-based calling and messaging applications. On 27th March, Try put up a consultation paper on its website asking users to give their views on net neutrality in India. Let's take a look at what we need to know about net neutrality and the probable outcomes if the scheme persists. In simple terms, net neutrality is the principle that all traffic on the internet must be treated equally by internet service providers. Net neutrality principles rule that internet service providers or ISPs should not discriminate online data by user, content, site, platform, application, type of attached equipment or mode of communication. Those advocating net neutrality believe that all bits of data are equal and therefore should not be discriminated on the basis of content, site or user. This has largely been the default mode since the internet started. Net neutrality has vast implications for starters, especially for startups, many of whom are dependent on the medium for the success of their business. Smaller enterprises will not be able to pay for operators' data fee and this will lead to an unhealthy collusion between big enterprises and the operator. Netizens and activists fear the discriminatory pricing proposals that could take place if India abandons its stand on net neutrality and users will be the one to suffer. The net neutrality debate is as contested worldwide as it is in India. In the US, the Federal Communications Commission just recently voted for a strong net neutrality rule. This is to ensure internet service providers neither block, throttle traffic nor give access priority for money. On 4th March, 28 member states of the European Union presented a joint proposal on the telecom single market, a legislation that will determine whether net neutrality will become a reality throughout Europe. Last year, Chile banned zero-rated schemes, those where access to social media is given free to telecom subscribers. Coming back, the ongoing debate on net neutrality is that by charging extra for voice over internet protocol calls, Airtel or any other telecom operator breaks the net neutrality because it identifies a certain kind of data on its network and then asks consumers to pay extra for that. Netizens and activists argue that by charging a special price for a certain kind of data, the operator breaks the concept of net neutrality. Amid the debates, net neutrality campaigners scored their first victory on when e-commerce major Flipkart pulled out of discussions with the Bharti group for joining Airtel Zero. After Flipkart ditched Bharti Airtel's plan, the telecom company has strongly defended its under-fire Airtel Zero scheme, saying it does not violate the concept of a free internet and is just an option for customers to access apps for free, with the ultimate aim being to get more people onto the web. Further, the company said that no site, whether on the toll-free platform or not under any circumstances, is blocked, throttled or provided any form of preferential access. This week, Google unveiled its long-awaited phone service called Project Fi, putting the search giant in competition with other wireless service providers. The service is an attempt to blend several communication tools and the multiplying ways of calling people into a single phone number and service. Take a look. Google announced a new wireless plan that will allow customers to pay for the exact amount of data they use on their smartphones. 
The company said the plan is part of its Project Fi. Customers can check whether their area is covered by Project Fi through this link and request an invite. The website said customers do not have to sign up for an annual contract to participate. For now, Project Fi could be considered an experiment. It will be available only to people using Google's Nexus 6 phone, limiting its reach. Unlike typical cell service, Project Fi will mix traditional wireless technology where calls are routed through cellular towers with the wireless internet service found elsewhere. Google has teamed with Sprint and T-Mobile to provide the traditional wireless service and said it had about a million wireless hotspots for the rest. In addition to changing networks, the service will move users' phone numbers between screens so that they can talk and text on phones, tablets or laptops. Traditional cell phone carriers charge customers upward of 100 US dollars a month for their services, including phone calls and mobile data. Google service will be 20 US dollar a month for basic voice and text service, along with a flat 10 US dollar per gigabyte of cellular data. If consumers are near a Wi-Fi hotspot, then the connection would be default to that, lowering costs. For now, Google has said it is an experiment and it is not intended to disrupt the wireless industry. Project 5 will only work with the company's Nexus 6 phones. Its carrier switching technology lacks a strong commercial track record and Google is untested as a wireless operator. So people who sign up will be guinea pigs in an uncertain experiment. Project 5 will automatically connect to more than 1 million free Wi-Fi hotspots if those signals are available. If not, it will choose either Sprint or T-Mobile's networks, switching between two depending on which it determines to be the best at the time. Early access to Project Fi is already available, but consumers have to request an invitation and wait to hear from Google. Popular video sharing site YouTube was launched on 14th February 10 years back and the first ever video uploaded on this site turned 10 years old on 23rd April. YouTube made history after its founder Javed Karim uploaded a video called Me at the Zoo which changed the world forever. It might feel like yesterday that we were first introduced to the online video sharing site called YouTube, but this popular video site turned 10 this week. YouTube was founded on 14th February 2005. Alright, so here we are, one of the uh, elephants. Um, cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts. This was the first video ever uploaded to YouTube featuring YouTube co-founder Javed Karim standing in front of some elephants. The grainy 90-second video has now more than 17 million views. YouTube's importance to the music industry cannot be overstated. 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute, and a sizable portion of that is related to music. YouTube was registered as a domain name 10 years ago, and yes, it's gone viral. In this 10 years, YouTube has shown some impressive stats. YouTube has more than 1 billion users. Every day, people watch hundreds of millions of hours on YouTube and generate billions of views. The number of hours people are watching on YouTube each month is up to 50% year a year. 300 hours of video are uploaded on YouTube every minute. 60% of a creator's view comes from outside their home country. YouTube is localized in 75 countries and available in 61 languages. Though Me at the Zoo was the first video uploaded and it has an impressive number of views, but it's by far not the most watched video. That title goes to the music video Gangnam Style by Sai. It has 2.23 billion views to date. The distant second place video has only 1.13 billion views and that's Justin Bieber's baby. It's 
say hello. Hello. This may come as a shock to no one, but according to a Pew Research Center report, 31% of online adults have posted a video on YouTube and 45% of those posted a video are of their pet or an animal, with cats being more popular than the dogs. What began with a guy standing at the zoo is now enlisting celebrities of its own creation to interview the leader of the free world. Well, we are heading for a short commercial break. We have lots of interesting stories coming up. Stay tuned and keep watching DD News. Har din badalti khabre, har pal banti nayi surkhiya, khabron ki raftar ke saath, har do pehar dunya ki taza tasveer, do pehar samachar, rozana do baje, sirf. DD News Park. Surkhiyon ki bheed mein ahem khabre Asal mudde Jho daalte hain aap ki zindagi par asar दिन भर की हर बड़ी खबर का बेपाक विश्लेषण सच सटीक संपूर्ण न्यूज नाइट सोमवार से शुक्रवार रात 8 से 10 बजे सिर्फ डीडी न्यूज पर सुबह का सही आगाज ताजा खबरों के साथ सुर्खियों के आईने से देश विदेश की सही तस्वीर और दिन के हर पहलू पर नजर नया सवेरा सोमवार से शुक्रवार सुबह सात बजे सिर्फ डीडी न्यूज पर वेलकम बैक यू मस्ट बी फैमिलियर विद द ट्रेंडिंग टॉपिक्स ऑफ द वीक But here's a quick wrap of the top trends on social media sites. The earthquake which shook Nepal was one of the top trends on the social media sites this week. The massive quake claimed over 1900 lives so far and about a million are affected in Nepal. India started the rescue work and showed full support for the Himalayan kingdom. Emergency was declared in Nepal after the earthquake. In response to the quake social media giant Google and Facebook also came up with safety check and person finder on the web to help people track who are missing after the Nepal earthquake. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Man Ki Baat this week was again a trending topic. In his radio address to the nation PM Modi referred to the Nepal earthquake and India's role in relief and rescue operations among other issues. He also highlighted the true spirit of sports and lauded the ranking of the players. As the Tata Group acquired a stake in the Chinese electronic and handset company Xiaomi, Indian businessman Ratan Tata was also a trending topic this week. It is the first Indian investment in the smartphone handset company. Chairman of Tata Sons Ratan Tata expressed his excitement after the investment deal. After announcing the launch of Apple Watch, the company started to deliver the product to the customers who pre-ordered for the gadget. The lucky customers who already got their hands on one came out with their unboxing videos and pictures. Prime Minister Narendra Modi used the public transport for the first time. His pictures of riding Delhi Metro was much talked and shared on social media sites. PM Modi travelled from race course to Dwarka station of the DMRC. Later, PM tweeted that he really enjoyed that ride and thanked DMRC and the Metro Man Sridharan for it. Moving on Facebook has launched a new app called Hello designed to give users more control over who can call you and how their details appear even if their number isn't stored in the contact books it pulls in any publicly shared data from users Facebook profile and lets you easily block unwanted callers take a look 
Billions of calls are made every day on mobile phones and people often have very little information about who's calling them. So say goodbye to calls from unknown numbers as social media giant Facebook unveils its latest app called Hello. Starting from this week, Facebook has started to test Hello, which is a new app built by its messenger team. Hello connects with Facebook so you can see who's calling, block unwanted calls and search for people and places. The Hello app also gets the social networking giant involved in a form of communication from which it's mostly stayed away, that is, your phone calls. As of December, Facebook reported 890 million daily active users, including 745 million daily active users on mobile devices. On a monthly basis, its latest figures show it has nearly 1.4 billion monthly active users and 1.2 billion monthly mobile active users. When you get a call, Hello will show you info about who's calling you even if you don't have that number saved in your phone. You will only see info that people have already shared with you on Facebook. You can also search for people and business on Facebook and call them with just one tap. So if a friend tells you about a new restaurant in your neighborhood, you can also use Hello to find their hours, make a reservation and get directions all without leaving the app. Hello makes it easy to block unwanted calls. From your settings, you can block specific numbers and adjust whether you want to automatically block calls from commonly blocked numbers. Blocked calls go straight to voicemail and can be reviewed in your recent calls. With Hello, people will only see info they could otherwise find on Facebook. Facebook has also made it easy to control the experience using your settings on Facebook and in the app. For now, the app is only available in US, Brazil and Nigeria. As for whether it will ever be offered on Apple's iPhone, a Facebook said it depends how the software tests out on Android. We are heading for another breather. Stay tuned and keep watching TD News. Make in India initiative is a very good initiative and uh, we invited our people to look at the opportunities available here in India, the strength of India is not in its economic power or military might, it's in its culture. देश विदेश के महत्वपूर्ण समाचारों के साथ देखिए संस्कृत जगत की गतिविधियाँ संस्कृत भाषा में स्वागतम अत्र भवताम सर्वेशाम संस्कृत वार्ता प्रसारणे असौ वैदिक चिंतनम योगम ज्योतिषम आयुर्वेदम चाधिकृत्य विशेषज्ञताम भजते भारतीय नो ओतेन एकेन तद्देशान निस्सारिता हा श्वानुतना हा वार्ता हा समुपादाय वार्ता प्रतिदिन प्रातः छह बजकर पचपन मिनट पर Next up, Western developers aim to bring Zen-style relaxation back to Asia using an app. But with the rapid and demanding pace of life in major cities, that could be easier said than done. The app called Headspace makes its money by getting people to subscribe it to its modern variety of mindfulness. Take a look. Headspace, the app that brings a modern home to meditation, is launching in Asia, the very place where these Buddhist-based ideas began. Headspace preaches learning to still the mind through meditation. So you would think the concepts would be very natural to Asia. This is not the case, says Headspace co-founder Andy Pudicombe. 
My experience has been in the feedback that we've got from people, whether it's in, in India and in Thailand and Hong Kong, is that they kind of know about it intellectually, but they don't know the experience of it, as in they don't do it on a regular basis. And when we ask, well, why don't you do it? They're like, mm, not really sure where to go or like how to get started. As one of the fastest growing regions on the planet, Asians are just as stressed out as their Western counterparts. Surveys show more than three quarters of people working in Hong Kong finance are expected to hit severe burnout and almost half the population are working in Somiacs. Andy spent a decade training in monasteries and says cultures are the same everywhere but modern life is simple, well overloaded. Headspace makes its money by getting people to subscribe to its modern variety of mindfulness. It's hoping Asia will join the calm, cool and collected millions finding inner peace in an app. Moving on, Facebook posted its slowest quarterly revenue growth in two years as profits were hurt by increasing amounts of money going toward research and development. More details in this report. Facebook posting its slowest quarterly growth in two years. Big spending on research and development eating into profits. Heavy investment in side projects like WhatsApp, Instagram and virtual reality headset maker Oculus Rift pushing expenses up more than 80%. Some say Facebook shelled out nearly 10 times what Apple did on R&D for the same period. Revenue came in at $3.5 billion for the first three months of 2015 a 42% jump in growth compared to last year. Analysts say it's still an astonishing growth rate for such a large company, but sales were growing at 70% a year ago. The figures bound to leave investors a little disappointed. That showing in aftermarket trading with shares falling 2%. There's good news mixed in. New users are still signing up and more of them logging on through their smartphones. Really hard attack to the base of the democracy, the freedom of expression, the freedom of uh, demonstrating people, the freedom of getting uh, freely information. Although it was watered down from a draft introduced last year, it was approved in December by Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy's People's Party's absolute majority in Parliament. They argue that the citizen security law guarantees freedom and will have the support of a majority of Spaniards. Opponents say it still limits basic freedoms in a country that only emerged from right-wing dictatorship in the late 1970s. Spain has seen a rising tide of street demonstration and strikes against the joy's unpopular austerity program, including cuts to public health and education, but the protests have been mostly peaceful. Well, this is the end of our show. Continue sending in your feedback, comments as you have been on ddnews.com, either at gmail.com, on our Twitter handle, DD News Live, our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. Before we sign off, we leave you with an interesting video. See you again next week. Thank you and goodbye. I can make anything I want with science. One day I will even make a drink that makes you an amazing scientist. One day when I grow up, I'm going to be a pilot. I'll take people all around the world, even the North Pole.